The income statement takes revenues and subtracts all expenses to get to a net income or profit. Now the way the order in which this is typically structured is that it starts with cost of goods sold through to operating expenses and then those expenses that are less tied to operations such as interest and income tax. In order to compare companies with different revenues and different profits and different obviously different numbers and different sizes in terms of efficiency and also to look at a specific company and see how profitable it is we can look at various measures of profit and that's what this video is about now we know that if we take the net profit it gives us the absolute number of, of, of dollars or, or other currency that the company is making based on the revenues it's generating we can convert that into a percentage and calculate what's known as the net margin so in this case the company has revenues of eighty million dollars and is generating net income or profit of four point six nine million dollars and that expresses a percentage as five point eight six percent meaning that approximately for every in this case um, for every dollar of revenues the company is bringing five point eight six percent of that is turning into into profit at the bottom line the bottom line i.e. the bottom line of the income statement if we were to compare two different companies and one had a net margin of 5.86% and another one had a net margin of 10%, we might conclude that the one with a net margin of 10% is, more, is able to bring more to the bottom line. In other words, would be potentially more efficient or certainly has a higher net margin. Now, we can look at other margins within the income statement to get a more clear idea of where these things are happening. If we look at the net margin, obviously the net margin has taken into account the income tax expense and the interest expense, both of which aren't purely related to the operations of the company. The interest expense being influenced by the capital structure of the company, i.e. the amount of debt versus the amount of equity that it has to finance itself, and the income tax expense being influenced by the tax regime of that country or state or the particular legislation at that time. So if we were to compare companies in different states or regions or countries with different income tax regimes, we wouldn't really be getting an idea of the profitability of the company from an operational level. So what, we, what analysts often do is they look at the operating margin of the company. The operating margin is defined as the operating profit, in this case $12 million, divided by the revenues of $80 million. So what it gives is the percentage of the revenues that comes through as operating profit. And it measures the efficiency and the profitability of the company if we ignore the tax and the financing considerations that take place in the income statement below the operating profit line. So if we were to compare two companies, one with an operating profit of 15%, as Acme Corporation has, and one with an operating profit of 25%, we could probably say that the company with an operating profit of operating margin of 25% is able to convert more of its revenues into operating profit and is potentially more efficient looking purely at cost of goods sold and operating expenses. And so perhaps the company Acme Corporation with a lower operating profit and the operating margin the lower operating margin could, through restructuring, improve its operating margin. And if we were to believe as analysts that that might take place, then that could be something that drives the earnings higher in the future and, and, and might cause the company to surprise on the upside at some point in the future. On the other hand, the company might continue to deteriorate on its operating margin. It might just be a badly managed company, and the operating margin might decline further in the future, and then earnings would be impacted as well as the operating profit is reduced. Irrespective of all of that, the, we can see how the operating margin gives us an idea of how much of the revenues is converted into operating profit for this given company. The gross margin gives an idea of how much of the company's revenues are converted into gross profit. Gross profit being profit, uh, the profit that is revenues minus cost of goods sold. So the gross margin of 40% means that 40% of revenues um, become gross profit and it gives an idea of the efficiency of the company looking only at the cost of goods sold or the cost of sales which are effectively the material costs for most companies so if two companies one had a gross profit of forty percent one had a gross excuse me a gross margin of forty percent one had a gross margin of fifty percent then the company with a gross margin of fifty percent was probably able to either sell its products at higher prices 
or was more efficient and saving on material costs or, or having either cheaper material costs on a, on a per unit basis or using less materials in order to achieve this better profit margin. And this would give us an idea of where potentially the inefficiencies or efficiencies of a company lie. So this is just a brief introduction to the different margins we could look at within a company that, and in order to analyze and perhaps compare companies at points in time. And also further illustrates the nature of the income statement and how the income statement works and can potentially be used.